So really, the next thing to do is just do a job. So we're going to click on this. And the other thing that you can do right now is a quick job. So as I discussed, you are being a freelance truck driver. The employer is going to loan you everything you need to do the job. As you own a truck, you will be able to do jobs on the freight market where you go and physically pick up the jobs with your truck. But for right now, we just hit quick job. Okay, so because this is going to be your first job that you're doing, I suggest highly that you sort the jobs by some metrics. So right now, it's just by price. So it's going to put the job that's going to pay you the most at the top and sort it by that way so prices are going to be going down. Because again, this is your first job, I'm going to say go with route length and we're going to go in uh, this order. So we'll put the shortest jobs at the top and go down from there. So now what we're going to look for is what are we hauling? So in this case, it's pork and it's 18 tons. Where are we hauling it from and to? So we're going in this is going to case, it's going to always be Berlin as the origin point because this is the only city we've actually explored so far. As we explore more cities, more jobs will be on this board coming from different places. So in this case, this goes from Berlin to this town here, and you get to see the route drawn out. So this tells us the distance to that job. Well, the delivery would take. How much time it's estimated to take. And then if we look here, we've got the, the expected time. So just like before, this is the main area we're worried about. So 1700. So we have a little over seven hours to deliver it if we took the job right now. Offer expires in 12 minutes. This doesn't really matter because we're doing quick job and we instantly teleport to where the jobs are. But if you had your own truck, this would matter because you have to get to where the job is in 12 minutes or the, the job goes away. So that is more important later. We have the amount of money we're going to be paid. How much we're being paid per kilometer we're driving. So obviously bigger here is better from a certain standpoint of value. And what type of delivery this is. Because we haven't leveled up, we don't really have access to anything really different. So it's just going to be a standard delivery. And then if we hover over the truck, we get to see exactly what truck we are driving. So it's a man truck. Uh, it gives you the exact model and what engine it has, what gearbox it has. So it has a 440 horsepower engine. Or if you use the metric system, you have the, the different measure there as well in parentheses. And then it's a 12-speed gearbox. If we go to a different truck here, this is an Iveco. This is the cheapest truck in the game, the Iveco Stralis. It's not necessarily the best truck in the game, by, by especially if you're starting. It's very underpowered is its problem, but it's got a 360 horsepower engine, 12-speed gearbox, and so on. So we can do this a number of different ways. You can use this to try out various trucks by the different brands and, and see what they're like and see whether or not you like them. Or you can just purely pick this by the job. Let's say we wanted to pick a job that had a good value here. So this one looks like a good value, 14.55 per kilometer. That's definitely better than the other ones we see on the screen. So we'll pick that. It is 200 kilometers, which is kind of a, a little bit of a further distance that we're gonna have to worry about, but I think it'll be all right. So we're going from Berlin to Dresden. So we'll go ahead and hit take job. And once we've done that, we will instantly transport to where the job is. We'll be in the truck that we selected. So this is a Scania. We already have the trailer hitched. If we go to two, you can see what we have on the back there. And I didn't pay attention to what the what we're hauling here. So as a reminder, if we go to F6, we get the job. So it's a reservoir tank, 11 tons. So this is, this is reminiscent of our first job, uh, where we're going, what time they expect us. So we have over eight hours to get there. How much our job income is, how much time remains before it cancels. And uh, there you have it. So let's go ahead back to F5 so we have our navigation system. Remember to put yourself in drive. Hit the right trigger. We'll start your engine. You don't have to hit the actual engine start button to do that. I'm going to move the uh, view over a little bit because the mirrors on the Scania are kind of awkward. And we'll start driving. Now the Scania is by no means a bad truck. It's a pretty good truck with a lot of upgrade options in the future once you level up. But... I don't like the mirrors particularly, uh, so that would be the one drawback. But if you don't mind the mirrors, there's nothing wrong with it. So we have to turn left here, so there's a lot more we have to mind. But I need to pull up so I can see that way and that way, and it looks like we're clear. So we're going to go ahead and drive. 
you do have to allow for your your truck to a certain extent trucks are not necessarily speedy movers now based off of what the loadout of the truck that you picked is uh you have you might have more power in some circumstances than others oh okay speed limit i forgot to talk about this so we'll see right here in our navigation system this is the current speed limit now you will see speed limit roads but this is our current speed limit this is our current speed so we need to stick to that this game is kind of a stickler for that speed so don't go over it you get kind of an allowance of one kilometer an hour any more than that this speed will start turning red i'll show that in a second and the brighter red it is, the more over the top you are. And if a police officer sees you doing that, you will get a ticket and lose money. So it's advised to stick to the speed limit when possible. And keep your eye on that speed limit because it will change as you travel. Once we get on the highway, it will go up. In towns, it could potentially go down. 50 kilometers an hour in towns is pretty normal, I would say. So watch when I start speeding. It starts turning red. It's getting really bright red. Now we need to slow down. So we talked about engine braking. I'm pressing in my X button to do that. That's how I slow down. It's an alternative to pressing the brake. And it's a little less harsh. And for me, I set it so that you hold it in to use it. If you don't like that, let's go into our options real quick. So when I did my key bind... I set it up so the X button is on engine brake. This is a hold down. If you don't like that, change it to engine brake toggle. You press it once, it will be on. Press it again, turn it off. So that's entirely up to you, what you like. But if you prefer that method, very viable to do that instead. The trick to the toggle and using engine brake in general is you have to do it when you're not pressing the throttle so that your throttle will be your right trigger which is what makes you accelerate so yeah the, the throttle has to be uh you have to not be using it for the engine brake to work okay we got a green light so we're getting good luck here so i'm going to pull a little off to the left we're going to go a little slow here i'm just going to watch that right mirror and make sure we're clear you don't want to hit the anything on your on your trailer because you might get stuck or you might do damage to the trailer and possibly the cargo Okay, so let's take a look at some other things to do. Oh, well, I'm, I'm speeding again. <laughs> now we're 70 kilometers an hour, so the, the speeding didn't really matter. Let's go over a couple other things of interface and things that you have to watch out for. So once you get a little bit more advanced in this game, you're going to want to pay attention to... So here you have another indicator of your speed here. That's your speedometer. Here you have your rev counter. This is going to be more important later on when you are doing manual gearboxes because you have to change you have to set up yourself when those gear changes are going to happen you have to press a button to do so so we really need to watch the rev counter now the scania and the mercedes i was driving earlier and the volvo i recommended at the beginning of the stream are very good at indicating to you when you should be changing gear when you're in the green you're in a good spot when you're in blue you should probably really think about changing gear now, the layout of this might be slightly different for different brands, and some brands might not have these indicators at all. But later on, when you do the sequential gearbox, that will really uh, help. And also, even if you're doing an automatic, you don't have to pay attention to this, but I recommend you do so if you ever decide to switch over to manual gearbox use. You really should watch this and watch what the, what the game does. Because they're doing the shifting for you. Watch where the AI does the shifting. Now, I'm not saying the AI is doing it the most efficient way that possibly it can, but watch where it shifts, and that's going to be a good indicator of maybe where you should shift as well. So that's something to keep in mind. Other than that, we also have an information panel right in front of us. And this is something that we can change. Now, it's going to be different on every truck. And the layout of these different dials is also going to be different on any every truck. But we can change that. So we can't do it while paused. But if I unpause... Now, I'm going to have to do this when I'm not distracted by other things. So maybe we stop at this light, although I, I suspect the light will change by the, before we get there. I'm using the engine brake and in a combination with uh, my normal brakes. Okay, so we're at a stop right now. I'm going to press the I key. Note that the information panel changed. I can press that multiple times, and it will give us different results. This is more than likely our cruise control setting. 
Right now it's a zero because we haven't actually set cruise control. But as soon as I get the opportunity, I will do so and you'll get to see how that works. So I'm going to get up to speed. And once I get to 80 kilometers an hour, I'm going to go ahead and press the key bind that I used. So if you're not using my key binds, this would be the C key for cruise. But in our case, it's going to be the left on the D-pad. So we wait until we get up to speed. We're at 80 kilometers an hour. I pressed it. Note in the information panel, it now says 80 kilometers an hour because that's what our cruise control is set at. So I don't have to press anything. The game will maintain the speed that I set it to. And I just needed to pay attention to what I'm doing on the road and what's going on in my navigation panel. And we can just kind of sit here and cruise. So I think this makes it a lot easier. Uh, you don't have to do it by any means. Now, let's say I don't want to be in cruise control anymore. There's a couple different ways I can do that. I can just hit the cruise control button again and we come out of it. Or, now note I set it to 81 this time and it's staying at 81. Or, if I am more in a panic, I can press the brake pedal and it will take me out of the navigation system as well. Engine brake will also do the same thing. So, yeah, if you ever need to slow down in a hurry, let's say something happens in front of you, that's not something you expect to happen. Let's say there's a car that's in front of you that slams on its brakes for whatever reason. Don't worry about the cruise control. Just hit your brakes and the cruise control will automatically go off. That's pretty much how that works in real life as well. In most cases, I'm sure there's a, a vehicle that doesn't work that way, but every vehicle I've ever driven that had cruise control, that's how it works. And that's done for a very logical reason. But there you have it. There's how that goes. Now, cruise control will do its best. Ah, okay. One setting I, I should go over real quick while we're talking about cruise control. Let's go to gameplay. And this is a personal preference, but I do recommend it. We're going to come down to truck settings. We're going to keep scrolling down and you'll get to a section about cruise control. Under smart cruise control. There's a tolerance of five kilometers an hour or three miles per hour if you're using that system. Let's go ahead and cl click on that. And I'm going to say tolerance of zero. Whatever speed I set this to, I want the AI to keep that cruise control set to what I have it as much as it can. And I recommend that. If you can do that, if you don't like it, you don't like it, but it's fine. Now, the thing we're going to watch I don't know if this gearbox box has a retarder or not. Well, the one thing that a the cruise control will struggle with is it will struggle with downhills. If we're going downhill, the cruise control doesn't have access to your brakes and it won't use your engine brake either. So it will have a hard time keeping the speed that you set and you'll probably start speeding. If you have a retarder on your gearbox, it will automatically kick that in, your cruise control will, and it will slow you down. Now we have to get over. This is a good uh, thing to, to see here. I am getting over, right? Yeah, see that, that yellow arrows? That's a road that, although it technically exists, as far as the game is concerned, and as far as we're concerned, it doesn't exist. And that's what those yellow arrows are gonna indicate. If you try to go there, that is a physical, well, it's an invisible wall, but it will physically stop you if you try and drive there and you will collide with it. So as much as that road is, is technically there and the AI will drive down it like it's a, a thing that they can do, uh, <laughs> you can't drive down it. So be mindful of that and those things will come up. In that case, we didn't really have a choice of where to go, so it was nice and simple. Oh, speeding. All right, let's wait until we slow down and then put our cruise control back on. So I slowed down to do that turn off. I used my turn signals and all that. Now, Germany does have a blanket 80 kilometer an hour speed limit for trucks in their country. I believe they have that in real life. Uh, that is also the same in Italy, Austria, Switzerland, uh, from what I've seen so far in game. France, I think, has up to 90, if I remember correctly. So that's OK. So you see that green light that just came on on our dash? Maybe we'll see it again in the future. That was the retarder kicking on. So this truck is equipped with one. 
Now, the indicator will change based off of what truck you're driving. Uh, the Mercedes, I believe it's an orange light. That's probably more in the center of the dash. And every truck will be a little different. But you'll get an indicator when the retarder is being turned on if the cruise control is using it. So it's good we have one. Makes it nice and easy for us. But because we kind of have a random grab bag of trucks when we're doing these quick jobs, you may not necessarily have, a, uh, have that as an option. Once we're done with this job, though, I'll show you the different trucks and, and the customization that you can do in this game. As far as what we're going to do in the game... Now note that that speed limit sign said 120 kilometers an hour. That's for passenger vehicles, not for us. Note in the navigation system, that did not change. Because again, Germany has a blanket speed limit of, of, of vehicles of our type. So some road signs you are going to have to ignore because of the nature of how the road laws work. So in this case, we have to get off. So we have an 80 kilometer an hour speed limit on the, the off ramp. So not, we really don't have to change our attitude here at all. Some countries like Italy will impose speed limits on you when you get on the, the off-ramps. Uh, in Italy, it's typically 40 kilometers an hour, depending on the situation. So just keep that in mind, that you may have to slow down. I recommend slowing down for an off-ramp or on-ramp anyway. But you need, may need to slow down. All right, so let's say we want to know a little bit more about what our route's going to be as we're going up. Let's go ahead and press our map button. So in our case, it's going to be the back button on our controller. Now it's zoomed out like I had initially, but we can zoom it in with the scroll wheel on the mouse. Or you could hit these buttons, I guess. So this is way zoomed in here. So we can see we come up, we get off a ramp, we come along here, we make a right turn, and then we move into Dresden. Now we see two question marks in Dresden. More than likely, that's going to be a recruitment agency and a dealership. So if we can, I would like to drive up to these question marks because this is going to be an opportunity for me to unlock these things. So let's say I want to alter the navigation system. I want to go somewhere different than what the navigation system is telling me to do. So I'm going to go ahead and click and set a waypoint. So what that has done it has taken me to go to waypoint one first and then go to our destination. But I'm not done there because I see another question mark over here. So I'm going to put another waypoint right there. And now it has given me a course that allows me to hit both those question marks while still going to where our ultimate job destination is. So that's real nice. And you can do these waypoints even when you're not on a job if you own your own truck. Now, we don't own a truck, so I can't drive around in the world freely, but eventually when I buy a truck, we'll do so. Now, as far as I'm concerned for the progression of this game, oh, our view got messed up because I, I moved the mouse a little bit. We're going to wait until level six to buy our own vehicle. And the reason why I'm going to do that, you'll see in a bit as we do a couple jobs, you can take a loan. And that's perfectly fine if you want to take a loan. You can even take a loan before you get your first level up if you so choose. But I don't recommend that if this is the first time you're playing this game. Let's try and pay a lot of our way just by doing these quick jobs and raising the money that way. Which is an entire... See there, the speed limit lowered on this ramp down to 60. So it's just something you're going to be mindful of. Germany is not nearly as restrictive as, for example, Italy... But I still, I'm slowing down to be safe. You don't have to necessarily stick to the speed limits if safe driving prevails. And you feel that you should slow down based off of what the road conditions are. And this is a situation where you could also override and I'm going too fast. This truck has a little bit more powerful engine than I'm <laughs> maybe used to in my other playthrough. Other playthrough, I, I am in Italy, which is why I'm using Italy as a reference oftentimes, because it's where I have a lot of experience. I'm using the Iveco trucks, which are very underpowered trucks. Okay, so unfortunately, we didn't make the light. Do not run through lights. You will get a uh, ticket for that, and that will cost you money. So make sure you stop. So I can't see that light very well. Now, I can see it enough that I can tell what it is, but let's say I had pulled up enough that I really just could not see it. This is where you hit your other 
the other view, now you can see it clearly. But this is kind of the downside of where those traffic lights are. All right, so again, let's make sure we take our turn. Uh, I should have my turn signal on. Nice and wide and safe. Okay, now this is a feature we're seeing on the navigation system where it's it's got arrows pointing to a lane. Now that's telling me that I should be in one lane or another. In this case, it looks like it's pointing me towards the right. So we'll go ahead and put ourselves in the right lane. Now, sometimes these arrows can't be trusted, uh, but for right now, we're going to trust them and hope that they're doing, telling us the right thing. So we're still the 70 kilometer an hour speed limit, but I suspect once we get into town proper, it will probably drop down to 50. So we got another light that we got to stop at. And lights are a good time where you can mess around with stuff. You can take a drink, what have you, as need be. Oh, well. It turned green right away. <laughs> Just as I thought doing about doing that. So again, looking at my mirrors, I can see where other traffic is. So I can see that there's that blue truck to my left pulling up alongside me and about to pass me. And if you're newer to driving or you're not that experienced with driving, this is the kind of things you have to be mindful of. Kind of test yourself. Play a little game with yourself. You're bored driving on the road. Just just say to yourself, without looking in the mirror, see there's our, our, our lowering in speed. What color is the car directly behind me? Like, ask yourself that. And if you have been looking in your mirrors regularly, that's an answer you should know. And if you can't answer that question, then you haven't been looking in your mirrors enough. We got like a what looks like a Mini Cooper there. It's blue. You know, that's the kind of stuff you should be watching out for. Is just where are vehicles around you? What are they doing? Are they going to be a problem for you? Especially as sometimes the AI has brain farts. Uh, there will be some accidents that happen that won't be your fault. Uh, and it's just a nature of sometimes the AI making lapses of judgment. Okay. There's our agency. I believe we have to make a left turn almost immediately. Yeah, here we are. So the vehicle on the left there had right away, so we had to wait for them to pass. And again, if you're not experienced with driving, what does that mean right away? Well, when you are at an intersection, if you're turning right, that doesn't really affect anyone else. Now, this is obviously if you're on the right side of the road. So you can pretty much turn right freely. In a lot of countries, I don't know about Germany, you can turn right even when it's red. But if you're turning left, the vehicles going straight through have right away. So you have to wait for them to pass by before you can turn left. Now you may be able to force it and, and force the AI to brake, but that's not really proper driving procedure and it may cause an accident. So be mindful of that. And in this case, we have this sign up here. It says yield. Now, we don't have to stop here if we don't want to, but it's kind of an odd angle. So I'm going to look, make sure nobody's coming. So look right and left because we are turning left. Both lanes do matter to us. And we don't have right away. That's why that yield sign is there to let us know that we should be cautious because the people going straight through on the road we're currently on had the right away. Okay, and there's our dealership. It was a Scania dealership. Well, that's appropriate because we're driving a Scania, so there you have it. Okay, go ahead and make our left turn here. Now, in that case, the street to the left, I can go ahead and just make that left turn because there was nobody coming the opposite way of the road I was going, so there was nothing, nothing to worry about there. And the road to my left that I was about to turn onto, whatever they were doing doesn't matter to me because I have right away in that circumstance. They're the ones that don't have right away. Okay, so we've got a little bit of perhaps construction or an accident. It looks like an accident because that's a fire truck, I believe. So we're just going to go around them. Be cautious here. Okay, we're turning left. As I said, you don't have to use the turn signals, but I think it's a good habit to put in place. Sometimes I will forget. I'll try my best not to forget, but... So we have that yellow and then the green. Oh, 
Okay, and this is our destination. So I'm going to be in the left lane to make this right turn because we have a gate. This is kind of a tight turn. I'm going to do my best to make it. We're going to take it nice and slow. So that's why I took that as wide as I did like that. And sometimes you just have to do that kind of stuff. Uh, in Euro Truck Simulator, it's a lot more tricky than an American Truck Simulator because a lot of these businesses are like this where it could be... This was not so bad because you had two lanes to work with. But some of them might you know, might have just that one lane to work with. It's a, a sharp right turn to get into the business. They have a gate uh, with walls on either side. So it, it can be tricky to get into it. So just keep that in mind. So let's play it safe. They want us to pull off to the left here and stop it. So that's what we're going to try and do. But I'm not going to immediately start turning left. I'm going to take it a little wide, make sure we're clear of the wall. I mean, I'm well clear of the wall, but if I wasn't, that would have been a good process. So just like we did before, we're going to come out into this view so you guys can clearly see what it is I'm doing. So I'm going to start turning to the left, but I'm going to overcompensate to a certain extent. Now, I'm more concerned with where the rear of my trailer is. If I feel like that's lined up to the box, and I don't really have to do this, but we're going to take it beyond to a certain extent where the box is. And then we're going to start as I feel like it's lined up. That's probably good enough. We're going to start pulling back into the box. Now, if you don't get it right, it's okay. Don't don't fret it too much. Just keep in mind that backing up is a challenging thing to do with the trailer. And hopefully I can demonstrate at some point what you need to do when you are backing up a trailer. Maybe I'll do that next time we do a job. Just to show you kind of some of the, the principles of how you back up a trailer. If you ever need to. Okay, so as you can see there, we got quite a bit more experience because this was definitely a more difficult job. We had a lot more distance to cover. We got paid a heck of a lot more. And we still get that 15 experience bonus. It's all good. And hey, we got our first level. So let's go ahead and hit continue. And now we get to assign a skill point. So there's a number of things going on here. But let's take each thing one at a time. So we're going to start at the top at ADR. So this is more or less giving you a license to carry different hazardous cargo and you actually get an idea if you come over here what each of these things are so you class one is explosives class two is gases class the three is flammable liquids class four is flammable solids and it gives you a breakdown of what those possibly can be in each of these you have toxic and infectious substances and finally corrosive substances now you can pick these in any order you like and the main reason why you would take these is it gives you access to more variety of cargo and this cargo will be worth more to carry. So that's why you would take it. Next, we have long distance. This is going to do a couple different things. First off, it's going to unlock further distance deliveries. So without any levels in this, the farthest distance we can do with contracts available is 250 kilometers. If we want to increase that, we would want to put one point in here and now we can go up to 350 kilometers. And on top of that, we get bonuses. We get plus 5% higher reward for delivery distances longer than 250 kilometers. And we get extra experience if we get beyond that distance. And each rank is going to give us more distance and a higher reward bonus for going over a certain distance. Next, we have high value cargo. So the first level you take will unlock the jobs for high value. So until we have a level on this, we can't haul any high value cargo. But just like with the long distance, you also get reward bonuses. And the higher your rank, the more bonuses you get. Fragile car cargo works exactly the same way. So by doing this, you unlock fragile cargo. And on top of that, you get the bonuses. Just in time delivery, is there's actually two ranks of this important delivery and urgent delivery and more or less the way this works is you have less time to do the job and important delivery is a little bit less time urgent delivery is a lot less time so but by doing these deliveries you get a lot more money and you get your basic bonuses as well just like the other things and then finally, we have eco-driving, which is quite a bit different, but it's kind of self-explanatory. The more levels you have, the less fuel you'll burn, so the more fuel efficient you'll drive. So out of all of these, I'm going to take long-distance travel as my first rank to give us 
that little bit more distance and also give us the bonuses that we're, we would like. So let's go ahead and do that. But I highly recommend taking, ap after this one, I would say take a point and at least one and a lot of these. So maybe I'll do Fragile Cargo first. I recommend Fragile Cargo before High Value Cargo. And the reason why I do is because High Value Cargo oftentimes is heavier stuff. Whereas Fragile Cargo oftentimes isn't. And especially if you're using your own truck uh, and you bought it really early on, you might not have the power to, to easily haul some of this heavier stuff. It's not going to be super heavy, but heavy enough that it might be a problem. So I'd, I'd recommend Fragile Cargo maybe as your next one. And this will unlock more jobs for you. Obviously, you have to be concerned with driving safely because if you get into an accident, you may damage the cargo and it's fragile, so it's more susceptible to that. In any case, once we have put our point in, we just hit apply, and that is uh, uh, done. Every level you get, you get a new skill point. So we'll progressively get better and better at that. Also, as we level up, you will get a natural bonus to the income you get based off of your level, which is the reason why we're going to wait until level six to buy our first truck. Because if we end up taking a loan, which we should just now have access with, with this email, so we get another interface thing down here, and this is a lot of your management stuff. Right now, the only thing we can access is bank because we don't really have any of these other things. We don't have drivers, we don't have trucks, we don't have trailers, and, and so on. Let's read our email first. So we have need money, we can help. Here, sir or madam, we thought you might like to know that we offer favorable loans to new businesses. Do you need funding to get your business running? We are here to help. Please visit your local banking center for more information. Respectfully, Sales Manager Bank. Now, I will point out there's no actual physical place in the world for banking that, that just flavor text. Really, all you do is you press this interface button. Now, you could have done that probably in the email. You just push this button, and these are the loans we can do. You'll note that this one's grayed out. And that's because we'll have to get to level three. And once we get to level three, I believe that's the point that you get it. I might be a little off on that, but for, in my other playthrough, it was level three. You get access to a 500,000 limit for your borrowing. So you do get access to this higher up loan. But right now our limit is 100,000. Do you get a loan? You just click on it and it will give you the, the rundown of all of the things with the loan. So how many days you have to pay it off with, what the interest rate is, and what your daily installment is going to be. If we go up to 50,000, You'll note that the interest rate has gone down. The amount of days we have to pay it off is the same, but the interest rate is down. And this will be true of every one of these. The more money you're taking out as a loan in a lump sum, the lower the interest rate will be. But then we have a daily installment of over 1400 And then for 100000 we have almost 3000 we have to pay per day. But again, you'll note that the interest rate has gone down. 400000 euro... Loans are a little bit different because it's it's double the length of time. You have 70 days to pay it off. And it also has the best interest rate. So just keep that in mind. But for right now, we're not going to take any loans. But if you wanted to get a jump start and you just wanted to buy a truck right this second, this would be the way you would do it. Because this would give you enough money to buy some of the cheaper trucks. Now, you might be wondering, how much do trucks cost? Well, the main way to find that out is you come over to the truck, de truck dealers. Let's go ahead and take our first look at one of these. So we just discovered the Scania dealership, but let's go to the Mercedes-Benz dealership. Now, this may not give you a very good show of how much a truck costs because the Mercedes trucks are a little bit more expensive. But if we click on this, we hit visit selected dealer. They will ask us if we want to go there. One cool thing about this is we'll actually discover the city uh, in Poland here by going here because we are teleporting to this location. So hit yes. And now we're at the dealership. So first off, this is the truck that we're looking at. It's the uh, Actros. Uh, it gives you a little bit of a rundown of the different things that this truck comes with, what engine it has, the power of that engine, what gearbox it has, what the fuel tank is, uh, what paint color it is, and then it's list price. So it's 116000 if we just bought this as is. Now, there are more choices here. So if I go over here, now we're on the new Actros, which is the truck I chose for my tutorial mission. 
And again, the rundown of what's all going on here. You'll notice the engine power is quite a bit more. 421 horsepower, uh, as well as the torque and all that. The fuel tank is also quite a bit bigger. Uh, and then the list price, it's a little bit more. And even with that loan, we wouldn't be able to afford this. But if we want to change up some things, now there are other trucks that you can look at here, but it's really, they're just these two models under Mercedes. These are just pre-configured loadouts and I can't buy it because the upgrades required are at a certain level and I, I, I don't have that level yet it's level 14 which is actually quite high but let's say we want to do a little bit of customization oh you just hit this button and then you can pick some more particular things now many of these choices are not going to be available because we haven't leveled enough up enough to unlock them and that's another place where your levels come in and I'll show you a little bit more what you can expect out of this, because there is a way to look at what's in the future, even without having that level. And I'll show you that here in a second. So we have the different uh, cab types that we can choose. There should be three choices. And this is the cheapest one. And then they go up in expense from there. They're mostly cosmetic, though. They're, there's no real in-game impact of these, as far as I know. You have your chassis type. And again, I'll go over this in detail once you get to see the different types. But this is kind of the default here. Your engine gives you a breakdown of the horsepower, the torque, and uh, at what level of RPM, revolutions per minute, that that torque comes in at. And this is where your shifting is gonna more matter uh, because it gives you an indicator where that torque is coming in. And the torque is one of the more things that you're concerned about when you are uh, driving a truck like this. You do have some stats over here, over on the right. And if we were to choose different things, these, values would change as the choices we make unfortunately i can't really show that off to you because we haven't leveled up enough to do so and this is one of the reasons why i say we're going to wait until level six because most trucks are going to have a significant upgrade at level six like this one does so not only do we give ourselves the allowance to make more money over time to be better able to afford these trucks secondly we're giving ourselves a little bit of a leg up by having access to some upgrades gearbox in this case in euro truck simulator you get the gearboxes with retarders right out the gate so if you already have unlocked a gearbox you always have the retarder version of it that is not true in american truck simulator usually you have to level up a little bit more to get access to the retarder version of any gearbox i would recommend taking that but obviously you expend more money taking the retarder and this is just going to make your cruise control work all the bit much better if you have it and these are just various cosmetic choices and what have you and paint job. Now, paint does cost money in this game. So if you want to save yourself a little bit of money, you can take a cheaper paint scheme. And there's a number of things we can delete. So these are going to be various options that are on the truck. Some, Most of them are going to be cosmetic, but some of them are actual functional, like the mirrors and stuff. But like a nice, easy thing to save yourself money with is this mirror on the front. I can full on delete this by hitting the X. So it costs me 16.80 in euros. I can just hit X. And now that cost has been deleted from the truck. Unfortunately, I can't delete this one. If the X isn't there, then you can't delete it. It's, you're forced to have it. But you can double check to make sure there's not a downgraded version of any particular thing. And a lot of trucks, you can delete a little bit of money. In this case, the sun visor. Don't need it. Delete it, save yourself a little bit of money. That gives you kind of an idea of some stuff you can do in the dealership. And once you're done customizing it, you can hit confirm. And then whatever you customize here will replace that default loadout. And then you can directly purchase the thing that you've set up. For now, we're not going to worry about that. Because we don't have the money. And even if we took a loan, we wouldn't have the money. So let's just go ahead and leave. And we have a set plan. Level 6, we're going to wait. Now, if you want to know what upgrades are available for any truck, just go ahead and hit the vehicle browser. Go to truck browser. And then click this one, and you can pick any truck that's in the game, regardless. So, in our case, it defaulted to the truck that I chose at the beginning of the game. But again, we're not forced to take this. Uh, so, you know, let's say we want to look at the Volvo that I recommended at the very beginning in particular, the FH Classic. So I click that, 
Then you have your cab choices. It's defaulted to the bigger one, but let's go to the sleeper uh, here as this would be the more affordable choice you have. Our chassis, so it's on 4x2. What does this mean? Well, 4x2 means that we have four wheels and two of them are powered, so the rear ones. The ones in the front are our steering wheels. Next, we have a 6x2. In this case, we have six wheels, but again, two, only two of them are powered, so the back two. This one is a little bit uh, interesting. So it's six by two slash four. So this is the same as the previous chassis. You have six wheels, two of them are powered, the ones in the rear. But this last bit lets us know that there are four steering wheels. So this wheel here will turn as you turn. So that's kind of an interesting lay uh, layout. Now, why would you want that? It would improve your turning circle. This is gonna have your best turning circle because it uh, it has less axles to really worry about, and it's a nice short wheelbase. Here, you're extending the wheelbase, and you have more wheels here in the back, so it's going to have a significantly worse turning circle. By going to this, we're going to help mitigate that to a certain extent, so that's the reason why you would do that. And then we have uh, this one. I don't know how much I could tell you with these ones, so you have various choices of one of the axles is going to be lifted up, so in this case, still six by two, two of the wheels are driven. In this case, it'd be the middle one that's driven because this one's lifted up in the air. This probably does help with the turning circle and your rolling resistance. So maybe a little bit better fuel efficiency would be my guess on why you'd want to do that. And then this one's the middle axle is lifted up and then that rear one's going to be driven yet again. And then finally, we have six by four, the four designating that there's four driven wheels and it's going to be the back two axles or back four wheels that are driven. This really helps you for going uphill and hauling uh, heavier cargo because you have much more traction as more, there's more driv driven wheel wheels. So you get to transmit that power uh, a little bit more effectively. So that's all your loadout. Now, one thing that's a little bit of a hidden metric that although when you are at the dealership and you're right before you're about to make your purchase, it will tell you how much your fuel tank is. One thing that doesn't do a very good job of telling you when you're actually customizing your truck is how much fuel you're going to have. So you'll know just by looking at the fuel tank here, which is this gray box here. There's one on the other side. That's a pretty big fuel tank. When I switch over to 6x2, you'll know that the fuel tank shrunk quite a bit. Well, you're, you're going to have a smaller fuel tank with this setup. And it's something that this game doesn't do a very good job of explaining to you. This is one of the areas that American Truck Simulator is much better because when you're picking your chassis, it actually tells you how big the fuel tank is. For whatever reason, they have never implemented that in this game. All right, moving on to our engine. You get to see all the different engines you could have. So starting off, we have a 420 horsepower engine, which is pretty good for a starting point. Now, this truck does cost more, not as much as the Mercedes, but it costs more than some of the cheaper trucks, like the Aveco is much cheaper than this truck. But it's not a big enough difference that the value of having a much more powerful engine, the Iveco, we'll look at in a second just so you can see the difference. Again, torque does matter as well, but it comes with a 310 horsepower engine as its starting engine. So that's quite a bit of a drop in power. And I think that that doesn't really outweigh the difference in uh, the cost as much, that this extra power is really going to help. So I, that's why I recommend this truck so highly. And then by level six, we'd actually have two engine upgrades. So with 460 up to 500. As far as uh, gearboxes go, if we were going off of that six, uh, level six rule, we wouldn't get a new gearbox, but we would start with this one. Gearboxes are a little tricky to explain. I'll try and do it as simply as I can. But the main thing you're looking at is the ratios here. Now you could go with the in-game stats to tr try and help you here, but Pretty much, this first number is going to be your gear ratio and your lowest gear. So this would be gear one. And the higher the number, the more torque is going to be transmitted to the wheels. So this is good for hauling heavier loads, getting you uphill, and so on. The next number after the dash is going to be the, num uh, the ratio of your highest gear. So in this case, it's 12-speed gearbox. is going to be gear 12. The lower this is, the better your fuel efficiency is going to be. So this is more or less going to be your cruising gear when you're on the highway to save you some fuel. 
So the lower this number is, the more fuel efficient your truck will be. Secondly, you have your differential. This works pretty much the same way. The higher the number, the better your power is going to be delivered to your wheels. The lower the number, the better your top speed will be. So if you want to get, and, and probably by extension, your fuel efficiency. So if we look at the next one down, we'll note that the ratio of the first gear goes down, but so too does the highest ratio. So potentially this is going to be a more fuel efficient gearbox, but it's going to be a gearbox that struggles hauling heavier loads. So it really comes down to what kind of cargo are you going to haul? Are you going to be doing a lot of, let's say, long distance uh, jobs, but not necessarily hauling the heaviest cargo? Then this actually may be a better gearbox for you because it will save you fuel, which is one of the things you have to worry about. I hope that gives you a rough breakdown of, of what all these gearboxes do and what makes one gearbox possibly better than another. The one trip up is going to be these Allison gearboxes. There are only six speed and you'll note that the ratio numbers are really low. This is misleading because there is a torque multiplier and this is one thing the game doesn't really take into account. At least American Truck Simulator didn't and I expect this game is going to be the same. So if you do end up getting this gearbox when you're in the dealership, you'll note that the stats will just plummet. That doesn't mean this gearbox is bad. It just means it's not tracking the torque multiplier here, which is not really giving the... Uh, the stats, it's not really representing them fairly. So this this gearbox isn't as bad as it would seem if, if you're looking in the dealership configurator based off of the stats that were over here in that right side. Okay, and that's pretty much a rundown of stuff you can expect. So if once we get to the sixth level, we would get up to two choices if we were using a Volvo. In the case of our Mercedes, if we just jump immediately over to the engine, we only get the one engine upgrade, and it would be up to 400. Uh, well, actually, this is the wrong one. This is... Uh, I oftentimes do this because uh, the, it's the... Yeah, we need to select that one. <laughs> Sorry. That was... I Sometimes I get confused with where the title is. All right, let's, let's do that again. <laughs> I knew that number was wrong. But again, we only get one engine upgrade, and it would be up to, we'll say, 450. It's 449, exactly, horsepower. Still pretty good if we compare that to, for example, the cheapest truck in the game, the Iveco Stralis. So for this one, you start off at 310 horsepower and you can see the torque and how much that's different than the Volvo was earlier. But by level six, we'd only have 330 horsepower and the torque would only be this. So this is very much an underpowered truck and it gets takes a quite a lot of time to level up enough to make it start being more effective. Once we get to 500 horsepower, we have to be level 14. Whereas in that Volvo, we can get 500 horsepower at level 6. And more torque on top of that, from what I remember. So this is why I've recommended the Volvo. I just wanted to make that clear. Uh, I really do think this is a good value. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, leave all that. So that gives you an idea, a breakdown of what you what you can expect in the future why we've made some of the choices we've made with waiting until we're level six before we buy our own truck and all of that okay one thing i do highly recommend you do whenever you finish a job is just give yourself a save now there's plenty of auto saves that happen so if you forget to do a save that's okay and i like to name my saves based off of what i've done so in this case i just finished a job so i say mission complete and hit save and this is going to give me a hard save. Now, one thing I would like to point out to you is when you do a save, it's going to take your truck, if you're, if you're driving a truck at the time you make the save, it's going to take your truck and put it at a dead stop. So if you're in the middle of a highway going 80 kilometers an hour, when you load that game, it's going to be zero kilometers an hour. And not only that, you're not going to be in gear. You're going to be in neutral. So just keep that in mind. And we have a kitty cat interjecting on what I'm talking about. Ha, ha, ha.